What the hell happened in Mongolia? This just looks made up. Uh, okay, it's uh, the Chinese Shrek guy. Yeah, because he, he did get his uh, his former land taken. Or maybe I should say a swamp. But these are the seven major superpowers in the base game. These are the strongest countries on the map. Although for some of them, that could be debatable. But when it comes to bonuses in this video, these nations didn't get anything. So they're definitely not going to be looking as strong in this campaign. Now, of course, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, or how small you are. All these places got major bonuses as long as you're not a part of that original seven. So let's talk about the four things I gave most of the world to help them become a superpower. Everyone got at least one million manpower, as well as a shit ton of equipment. They got more technology slots. And finally, I had instant construction on for an entire month. Now, of course, some places are at more of a disadvantage than others just because of a lack of territory. But they definitely will be a bit stronger. They won't be as big of a pushover as they normally are. But already, I mean, look at Ethiopia. They're looking like they're going to win this conflict, like, right off the bat. I actually don't think Hitler's going to make it to the 1940s. Every single nation he declares war on is going to take a much bigger toll out of his country. I gotta admit, an AI Liberia with, uh, four technology slots is definitely something I never thought I'd see. And actually, now that I think about it, it is possible, even though it's absolutely ridiculous, that a war between the Dominican Republic and Haiti could now go nuclear. What the fuck have we done? East Asia has already broken out into a war, which now is also a good time to mention that uh, these guys just immediately joined the common turn. I thought that was kind of interesting. And back in Africa, this conflict has just been a huge stalemate. The problem is Benito's gonna run out of manpower before Ethiopia does. Oh, and that's not the only issue. We have an Ethiopian military with over 55 divisions. Jeez, it hasn't even been a year yet. Well, back in East Asia, of course, Hirohito's just getting his ass kicked. Yeah, you don't want to be fighting all these nations at once. Not in a video like this. Real quick, before we continue, I know there's a surprising amount of people that watch my videos that don't actually own Hearts of Iron 4. Well, if you want to change that, there's a fantastic deal going on on Humble Bundle Monthly. It's uh, 12 bucks. You can get a Steam key for Hoi 4, as well as two other games. I I've worked with this subscription service in the past. It's just amazing. They were giving away Civ 6 for 12 bucks. And of course, you'll be supporting this channel if you use the link down below, or you can wait to the end of this video and I'll also put a link at uh, at the end during the shoutouts. Ooh, okay, this is an interesting one. Remember, this is now technically two major superpowers. Go on at it. Oh, but I forgot their friends are gonna get involved. Okay, this, this just means that the Siamese are gonna join the Japanese faction or whenever there is a team that forms up. We also now have this conflict between Honduras with 18 divisions and El Salvador with 22. In just about any other video, I would have completely ignored this. This is also pretty interesting. We've got the Dutch drawing plans to invade the Nazis, as well as Poland invading the Soviets. Really loving this realism. Damn it, okay, I guess it doesn't matter if Austria is a world superpower. They still just don't want to exist in Hoi 4. And I'm really confused right now why Hungary has one of the biggest militaries in the world. 152? I, okay. Everyone got the same bonuses. I don't see how you guys got all this shit. We've got a pretty sexy Batman pact already in the Middle East. Unfortunately, this faction doesn't do much, so I don't I don't think we're gonna see anything. Okay, that's the strangest one so far. I don't think I've ever seen Paraguay declare war on Argentina. And what makes it even weirder is Argentina has 44 divisions to Paraguay's 79. All right, so they've been working on their military. Of course, okay, yep, the US is gonna get involved. But, you know, it might not be that big of a deal. They're obviously not as strong in this universe. And Ethiopia won. They've taken their territory back, and now Benito is probably crying back in Europe. This is pretty rare. I can't remember if I've ever seen this before. We've got a fascist uprising in Czechoslovakia. I don't think it's ultimately going to make much of a difference, though. The war in Europe has begun in 1938. Germany declared war on Yugoslavia, causing them to join the Allies. All right. Yep, world tension's already at 81%. The Yugoslavians, by the way, just stopped a civil war... And now they're fending off both Italy and Germany at the same time. Wow. All right, they are carrying the team on their back. For the most part, WW2 is uh, pretty historical. Nothing too crazy is happening. At least until you get to South America and see that uh, Paraguay has taken over all of Argentina. That's nice. No! Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I really don't like this. Maybe they ousted him as soon as he lost to Ethiopia. Oh, man. I'm gonna order a pizza to pay my respects. Oh, Mao, Mao, this, this is not a good time to go after China. I feel like I'm about to lose all of my favorite leaders in this game. Oh, good, good. I, I'm so glad we're not gonna miss this. It looks like one side is gonna declare war on the other. It doesn't really matter. Wow, this is gonna be 
probably the biggest conflict these guys have ever had. Of course, I should have known, they're both gonna join a faction. Now we've got outside forces coming in to help out. Who knows, this small, insignificant island could actually be the place that has the most casualties of all. Oh man, that's some really bad news. I knew from the start that Mexico was gonna be one of the strongest nations just in general. And yep, they have over 175 divisions. They're gonna dominate here. Problem is, the Axis as a whole is just not gonna do very well, at least in the Eastern Hemisphere. I don't know how Joseph got involved, but yeah, that doesn't help much. And I guess Tibet feels like they can take on the entire world. They just joined the Axis. Okay, they were also about to go communist too. I mean, I know you guys are a superpower, but uh, holy shit. Okay, I, I didn't expect it to be that much. Okay. You still can't take on every nation in existence. And just a little reminder, Yugoslavia, about two years later, all alone over here, is uh, still doing fine. I think they might have taken some territory too. Iraq just took out the Saudis, and I just want to mention that this, uh, this Sadabat pack is actually one of the strongest factions in the game. Remember, all four of these nations, and Oman actually happened to join, all have like at least 50 divisions. I mean, Iraq has 160, so they're doing great. Don't mess with this team. Japan went democratic, again, after getting their booty kicked by the Chinese, and they'll likely join the Allies, just as China did. Well, that's a weird one. Why would they... Why would they do that? Oh, yeah, that's not normal. Uh, the Axis is starting to slowly see a little revival here, with Romania taking over Bulgaria, joining the Axis, and uh, two new members from Scandinavia. Oh, now Poland formed their own faction, but uh, again, they are not to be messed with. This actually might have been a horrible idea. Also, yeah, this kind of sucks. Yugoslavia was about to have maybe the best game ever, especially if they made it to the peace treaty, but nope, Romania is going to ruin everything. But back to Papa Stalin pulling maybe an Uncle Adolf. Uh, by declaring war on all these very small, but obviously much more powerful countries, yeah, he might have just killed himself. This is hilarious because this front line isn't even filled with mostly Soviet divisions. They're the Chinese warlord that joined, and Mongolia and Tanutuva. That's what this shit's come to. And obviously there's been no movement here in one of the most important battleground islands. By far the most important in the entire war. Thousands of people have probably died here. Uh-oh, this is gonna cause some trouble. Okay, I can't wait to see which side these two countries join. And I guess there's our answer. Not too surprising. I do want to mention they have over 128 divisions. They're actually a lot more powerful than Brazil. It's insane to see these flags that aren't usually involved that much in Hoi 4. With all these divisions helping out in the front line, it's, it's just crazy. The actual major players aren't really doing that much. Oh man, in the fall of the Soviet Union, Poland's taking 27 states, Portugal taking 13. Wow, that, that's it? No one else got anything? Okay, somebody got some of these puppets. And it looks like that somebody, the person that just became maybe the strongest in the game, is Finland. Yes, Finland just grabbed all of this. And the only thing bigger than the Soviets falling is obviously Haiti taking control of this island. So important. What the hell happened in Mongolia? This just looks made up. Uh, okay, it's uh, the Chinese Shrek guy. Yeah, because he, he did get his uh, his former land taken. Or maybe I should say a swamp. Wow, even Ireland is feeling ballsy. We've actually made them do something in Hearts of Iron 4. This is truly an amazing feat. Let's also check out some of the casualties because the countries that have the most deaths, uh, yeah, it's not really normal. British Malaya and Yugoslavia lost the most for the Allies, and uh, second behind Germany for the Axis is Peru, and Paraguay right below them. This has just been an insane comeback, maybe one of the best ones we've ever seen. And obviously in any other video, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal getting Portugal, Romania, and uh, three Nordic countries on your side. But in this universe, it completely changes the war. Portugal just got even more land, and someone just puppeted Yunin. Maybe Finland, they've been doing a lot of that. Okay, here's another. That was a very annoying peace deal to get to. Portugal taking over 100 states, jeez, that's crazy. And then uh, I know that Germany has been also taking puppets too, so I'm sure some of this is their new territory now. So here's the world map. Wow, it looks horrible as expected, but I mean, my new favorite thing ever is uh, Mexican Raj. These names just continue to get fucking better and better. Obviously, everything is under Axis control. The Polish faction didn't really take anything. They just got new members. That's kind of about it. Oh, and Portugal basically rules the world now. That's nice, with almost 550 factories. That's pretty cool. Don't forget to check out that Hearts of Iron 4 deal on Humble Bundle. Thank you guys so much for watching.
and I'll see you next time. And as always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Furry Cruz, Swiss Argo, Leather Daddy Lennon, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Yeet God McNeckass, Maxi G, Tyler, Matthew Rembish, Caitlin Liu, Sean Spillman, Jens Love Disc, Bruce Vacation, Matthew E, Elijah Senpai, Kirby, Wyone, and Elfie C.